Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Me, and in this video we're going to be looking at another free Cinema 4D plugin, and this one's called Gelatine. Um, <clears throat> okay, so my scene, I've basically just got a box in it, a, a cube, and um, it's still a primitive, I haven't made it editable, and I've just animated it back and forth, so this is basically what's happening. Very simple animation, it's just moving in the Z direction. So let's go find Gelatine. There's clear instructions on the um, on the site. Uh, it's called Code Vonk, and I'll be putting a link in the description. But uh, yeah, there's uh, installation instructions there. Um, but if I go to plugins, you can see I've got Gelatine here. And if I select that, I can make it a child of my cube. And let's just press play and see what happens. Okay, well, there looks like there's a little bit of delay on there. Um, this is actually quite a lot like the Jiggle Deformer, but it's much easier to use, and um, you can get some really good results very quickly from it. Now, the reason that the whole box is jiggling like this is because we've got no um, subdivision on it. So let's go to our cube and actually crank these values up. So I'm going to give it 10 segments in each direction. And as you can see now, we're getting a lot more of a extreme result. It's actually deforming our points. And I'm also going to add a fillet as well. There you go. So let's have a look at the gelatine uh, def deformer itself. Okay, so in object, we've got intensity, pretty self-explanatory. Um, if I put it down to zero, no result. If I put it up halfway, We've got half of the uh, amount of jiggle that we had before. I'm going to crank it back up just so it's, um, you know, apparent what's going on. In the source as well. Yeah, sorry, in the handles, we've got source, we've got point selection. So this basically allows us to, you'll notice actually when I'm on source, the point selection thing here is grayed out. And if I put it on point selection, it opens up. So what we can do is create a vertex map for our cube. Obviously, that would have to be editable then. And then you go to select set vertex weight and then you can paint on a weight so this jiggle will only affect the parts that you've paint, painted at a higher percentage than zero um, so that's what that'll do let's get back to source there we go we've got radius this is the inner radius okay so in fact let's just stop this a minute so, so we've got radius and max radius this max radius is the outside here yeah? And the inner radius is this here, so you can really control what's going on. Um, obviously, there's going to be no, uh, nothing happening because our inner radius is too big. So if I drop this down, so it actually, so where the action happens is actually between this inner radius and this outer radius. So let's bring that down. So it actually, in fact, let's reset that to default. I think it was about 50. Yeah. So now this jiggle force is actually spread over a longer distance. So you can see that not much is happening, but if I reduce this max radius, so this is like the sort of 100%, if you like, you can see it having a lot more of an effect now. Okay. So that's these two sorted. Down to where all the action takes place really. This elasticity is obviously determines how stretchy and jiggly it is. So if I put it down to zero, you can see nothing's happening. 50% is what it was on before. And we're getting this effect. And if I crank it up even further, <laughs> you're gonna get something like this, which is absolutely crazy. But it may be the kind of effect that you want. So let's uh, bring that down. Whoop, whoop, whoop. maybe 60%. So you can really tailor how jiggly this thing is. Absorption. This basically, I, I assumed this would maybe take some energy out of it, like it's d almost like a dampening effect, but what it actually does is it, it kind of slows the jiggle down. So let's actually put this back down down to 50 and put this down to zero. So this is what it'll look like normally. And it's almost like um, by cranking this up, you get a little bit of 
It's almost like air friction. Yeah, so it makes that a lot slower. Let's crank it right up. So you can get some weird effects by mixing these. I'm going to put this down to maybe 5%. Okay. Uh, absorption angle. In fact, let's wipe this right down. So if we put this up to, say, 60, just so we get a uh, bigger effect. Okay, great. And turn the absorption angle up. It goes all the way up to 90%. You can see that we're getting a slightly different result to what we were getting before. And obviously you can um, put this up to 45 degrees. And then we can see what's going on here. It's very subtle there. Maybe if we make this a little bit more stretchy, we'll be able to see the difference. Okay, maybe not that much. 70% maybe. Okay, yeah, cool. So if this is zero, this is the kind of thing we're getting. And if it's at 90, let's just let that play through again. A little bit of a different result there. Anyway, I'm going to whack that back, back down to zero. Firmness, pretty self-explanatory. If we put this up, we're going to get a little bit more structural firmness there. You can see it's springing back a lot quicker. Whereas if it's at zero, it's a little bit more slack. So by whacking this up, you can stiffen up the animation by quite a lot. There you go. Then we get this invert value. So let's click that on. And let it go back to the beginning. And you can see that the middle of this has actually got this little jiggle on it now. Whereas before it was the corners. So if we turn that off, we can see that it's the corners that are sort of dragging behind. Uh, onto the spline. This basically determines how this jiggle happens. So like if I put this back down to 60, something like that. Okay, we've got that. If I grab this first point and drag it down, you can see that there's a lot more of a delay going on. So let's just undo that. And if I grab this end one and put it up, up in the middle, you can see that it ends well. Actually, it's kind of negated that effect. Let's bring that down a little bit. You, so you can see that it kind of dampens this. But you can also um, add your own points. So if I was to... I wonder if I could just drag this up here, actually, what effect that would have. Yeah, you can see that it's a lot tighter. So this can really help you sculpt what kind of jiggle effect that you want. I could do something like this if I wanted to. Okay, that <laughs> that really seemed to mess with it. I wonder what would happen if I did this. Okay. And further this way. Kind of stopped it. But yeah, there's plenty of plenty to play around with there. Boop, boop. Maybe all the way down the bottom. Oh, that is strange. Yeah, so you can really sculpt using a combination of these settings and this spline here. Like I said, it's uh, kind of like the Jiggle Deformer, but, um, you know, a lot more control, really. So let's try this as a different object. I'm going to open up my co content browser, and I've already got this ice cream. You can find it in the broadcast objects. So let's just get this in the scene. I'm going to grab our ice cream and actually uh, size this up. So we've got something like this. And if we actually look at our ice cream here, we can see that this is actually two objects in a null. And um, this deformer will work as a child of the null and affect both these objects, which is brilliant, because it means that if you've got complex objects and they're all in a group, they can all be affected. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually make, let's take the gelatine out of the cube for a minute. I'm just going to make the ice cream a child of the cube. So let's turn the cube off and then my ice cream will inherit the animation from that cube. So there we go. And then what I'm going to do is make the gelatine a child of the ice cream null. And then I'm going to move it up so it's kind of central. In fact, let's have a look at our side view here. And uh, let's make this bigger so it envelops the whole ice cream. 
We'll go back, see what kind of result we get. Let's take off our shading lines as well. There you go. So we've got the uh, little whippy at the top being affected there. <laughs> That's good. Everything's normal. So you can see how this really, really works on actual objects. Let's um, crank this up a little bit. Maybe turn the absorption up. <laughs> okay. Ah, there we go. Note to self, don't try and change that value while it's playing. And there you go, you can get some strange results from this. So that's it guys. Um, yeah, there'll be links in the description of the video and on the, my website on the uh, free cinema 4D plugin section. Don't forget to check out Digital Me at digitalme.uk. You can follow me on social media. There'll be links in the description. And if you want to help support Digital Me and keep it going, help would be appreciated. So check out my Patreon. Uh, it's a dollar a month. All right, cheers, guys. Bye. <laughs>